if he's going to take pictures, so we have to have our back to you, no offense. Because uh, this will make a good picture for your brochure. If That's right. Get everybody in there. So I've got to picture you all but from here. Uh, and I have no prepared remarks, so beware. And Paul, you can get your oh. camera out. This is going to be pretty long. Sure. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Really yeah. 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 Right. Right. Obviously, right. So I have to say that. And this raucous group, and, and we're all friends. And obviously, I'm preaching to the converted. Uh, because this is why you're here. This is why you're here. This is the ultimate no-brainer. Uh, when I heard that uh, Patrick was running for real life, and I assumed he was running, when I heard he was doing an announcement, uh, of course I'll be there if there's any way humanly possible. Uh, this is the ultimate no-brainer. Who would you want as Drain Commissioner in Ingham County? Who would we have if not for Pat? Uh, I don't know. I can't imagine where we would go back to the drawing board, uh, what, how we would replace him, I have no idea. Thank God we don't have to answer that question because he's running for re-election. So uh, I'm just happy to add my voice to the chorus. Uh, as we know, oftentimes there are people that believe that you have to choose between environmental responsibility and economic development. Uh, we don't believe that uh, with guys like with a drain commissioner like Pat Lindeman. We don't ever have to make that choice. We can do the environmentally responsible thing, still promote uh, the economy, still promote jobs. That's exactly what we want to do. When we have projects in Lansing, we turn to Pat Lindeman. Uh, when we work with projects with our, our public service department, they're on orders to work cooperatively with the drain commissioner. We want to work uh, constructively, cooperatively, and we trust the judgment that Pat Lindeman brings. We trust the experience, the expertise that he and his staff bring uh, to development issues. We want to develop uh, the city. Uh, we want to see the whole county developed uh, economically, but we also don't want to sacrifice environmental and ecological uh, benefits. So we have a drain commissioner that brings us all of that. Uh, we're very fortunate to have you, Pat. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your leadership, and uh, I'm delighted to, to believe and, and uh, know in my heart that uh, we'll have another four years of it. I will work to make that happen. So I'm delighted to add my voice to a chorus of support uh, four more years. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, very nice. And um, I'd like to have... Uh, a neighborhood representative stand up now and uh, put a few words in. Hi, I'm Monica Zahusky, and I've been a neighborhood activist uh, in Lansing since almost when I moved here. It's so almost 30 years now. And one of the things that is really important to me as a neighborhood leader is that Pat, for the past 20 years, invites the neighborhoods to the table, whatever he's talking about a project. Whether it's this project 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, to the projects over on the Red Cedar area, um, the east side folks are very involved over there. As a neighborhood leader, I really appreciate that, uh, that participation, his willingness to bring us in. And we all think of this as a park. Pat tries to remind all of us that this is actually a drain project. So I forget it. I think a lot of the neighbors forget it. The young lady who just came to walk along the, here probably forgets it also. But one of the things as a neighborhood leader, it's really important to me. And we really do appreciate that. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Yep. Glad you're going to be around. From the business community, we have uh, Leo Jerome. <clears throat> I'm Leo Jerome. I'm a businessman in the Lansing community. I support and believe in Pat Lindeman. I think that he's an innovative, progressive, and pro business uh, politician that I support. Thank you, Leo. Thank you. I'd like to wrap that up with uh, Cindy, Cindy yes. Roper from Clean Water Act. Well, it is my sincere pleasure to be here today. Um, you know, Pat Lindemann, I use his words and him as an example all around the state of what a drain commissioner should be. And I'm not exaggerating. I travel all over Michigan. I talk with drain commissioners. I talk with people who are working to address um, you know, water problems, so to speak, in their community. And I'm always able to use Pat's work as an example of how to take a problem and create an opportunity out of it. So here we are today at one of the best examples, not the only example, of the work that his office has done and that Pat has been at the leadership um, position with. And just I'm so delighted to be here and to give you my 100% uh, support in moving forward with your next run for Drain Commissioner. So thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Which leaves me. And uh, I want to thank uh, the people who have spoken and the people who are behind me and all the rest of the citizens that are supporting me. 
uh, which there are hundreds and hundreds of them. And um, I'd like to uh, officially say that I am running for four more years. to really uh, emphasize some things that have changed in the paradigm thinking process of environmental management. And uh, uh, 20 some years ago when I was faced with a combined sewer overflow problem in this neighborhood, for example, um, we uh, had to make some serious decisions. And uh, I was faced with 24 to 28 million dollars worth of public money being taxed back to this neighborhood to solve a combined sewer overflow dumping raw sewage in the river. And I couldn't, in my conscience, I couldn't burden this neighborhood with that much cost. I sat down um, and had to come up with a new plan. I met at the church over here, and uh, the Pilgrim Congregational Church, about 250 people. I listened to their concerns, and uh, they wanted me to, to not do anything, but I couldn't do that. So we went back to the drawing board, and we invented what you have here, the Colgate drain. The total cost of this was $6.2 million. 18 million dollars worth of savings and we solved all of the environmental problems associated with what was happening in this neighborhood with a combined sewer overflow and we made a passive recreational opportunity it's extremely diverse in wildlife the water that comes out of the end of this system is it's clean uh, it's used by the golf course it, it uh, helps reduce the cost of managing the golf course so everything here gets recycled and so on and this is i think an example of what we can do if we put our minds to it. Jobs in business does not have to compete with the environment. Being green is good business. And building a world where people love to work, play, and live together in an environment that's clean and wholesome also provides an, an environment to make money. And I think that the two have to go hand in hand if they don't. And I know the mayor understands that. And I know Clean Water Action understands it. And the neighborhood groups understand it. The business community does too. And that's what my 20 years has been about. Uh, the Heath drain. Um, there's, there's just dozens of them examples. Uh, the Tower Gardens. We saved over $10.5 million and solved a major flooding problem. Raw sewage backing up in the basements and so on. And... Um, so with that as the past, we're looking forward to the future. I've got the Grossbeck Park drain that the mayor now has executed all of the easements for. We're ready to get marching on building that. We're looking at um, the Montgomery drain, which is a Frandor project, the Red Cedar Renaissance. And uh, that project is going to be kicked off here pretty soon. The mayor and I are starting a series of meetings to put the proposals out and uh, to look at how we can uh, um, uh, make that whole area over there different than what it is today, completely different. And we're talking about possibly 400 to 500 million dollars worth of private investment in there. So you're talking thousands and thousands of jobs and a cleaner river. Now all of this stuff goes hand in hand. This is what we can do if we try and we put our solution uh, solving problems uh, on the table and we all work together. We can't all agree on everything. But I'll tell you something, every single problem is just a solution waiting to be born. And that's what this is about. That's really what this is all about. And uh, we can solve these problems. We created them, we can solve them. It takes time, it takes patience, and it takes a willingness to work together to make it all happen. Today, <laughs> we have Sam Singh here who's running for state rep. And I know that the state has to play a major role in this. And uh, Sam is gonna carry to the uh, state rep race uh, an opportunity to actually argue these issues, the economic development and uh, conflicts between economic development and the environment. And we need to do this kind of uh, cooperative work together. Our office, a little bit about what we're doing in the office, we have taken all of the data in our office. It's all digitized. We have mapping. We're going on the web. People will be able to look at aerials, historic documents that date back to the Civil War are all digitized and they're going on the web within a month or so. We're going to have a big announcement about that in a press release. So that, I think, is of great interest to people. All of our assessment uh, processes are going to be publicly on the Internet uh, for people to access. All of our projects are going to be tracked on the Internet so that uh, we can uh, look forward to, to uh, building facilities like this all over the county and, um, uh, and making it available to the public so that everybody has input. None of these projects work unless everybody has a say. We're a community. The environment, rebuilding the environment, rebuilding jobs is about community. 
Everything here is about quality of life, and that's what I offer in this next four years, a continuation of an effort to really make this community worth living in. And that's what we're looking forward to. So with everyone's help and with enough votes, <laughs> I need one vote more than the other guy to win, and uh, that's all I really need to get uh, the next four years going. And I look forward to a campaign process where we're going to debate the issues, not the person, and we're going to stick to the subject matter. And our message is going to be about jobs and a clean environment, a river that's better tomorrow than it is today, and a big, diverse community that we're going to live in, where kids don't have to fear walking down to the river and catching pollywogs. The parents don't have to worry about them glowing the next day because they've been subject to chemistry and all that kind of stuff. We're going to fix all that, and it takes time. 150 years worth of the environment, or worth of the um, uh, the industrial revolution, caused rivers. There's 17 rivers in North America that actually caught fire and burned. The Cuyahoga River is one of the more famous ones. Can you imagine us taking our water resources, caring about jobs and profit more than we did those rivers? But the rivers caught fire. Today, with the passage of the Federal Clean Water Act, working together with local communities and neighborhood groups, the rivers will not burn. Okay, I'll guarantee you they will not catch fire. And 20 years from now, they're going to be clean enough to swim in, full body contact. That's our goal. That's what this is about. That's what my campaign is about. And that's why I'm so happy that you're here with me making this announcement. Thank you very, very much. Now I'm going to uh, answer questions for anybody. And uh, then we're going to do a tour of this facility. And it looks like a little park. But it's not a Kentucky Fried Chicken picnicking kind of a park. This is a stormwater facility that mimics a park. And we have created a whole ecosystem here to solve a major problem. Um, tens of thousands of gallons of raw sewage used to go in the river out of this neighborhood. And it doesn't happen today. All right? And we've solved that problem. So, any questions? For the